I'm, I'm, I'm transferring myself and I'm trying to become a woman. This is also cre changes creation of Allah. Then there is a woman trying to become a man. Not those who are by birth they are wrong. We are not talking about those. We are talking about general people who are normally men. They want to tra transfer them into feminine by physically. So you are trying to alter the creation what Allah has created you. So changing and creating, then there are men who are shaving. Why men shave beards? Why they are altering themselves to become a woman? Women don't have beards or they don't have hairs on their faces. And if they do have, they pluck it out. If they don't like the, they don't like the hairs on their face. Because they are feminine. They, they, they do mathematical, they spend hour, thousands of rupees. The, now there are x-ray machines, or, well, I don't know, sorry, x-ray, there are some laser machines are there. So to remove the hair, unwanted hairs on the face. So men who are removing the hairs are copying who? Why are they removing? So there is an argument going on in the world. Where the Quran says that we should keep a beard? Where the Quran says to remove the beard? It is like, like you say, you start asking me a question. Muhammad Sheikh, you've got hairs. Where the Quran says you must have a hair on your head? The hairs on the head are available. So if I'm removing the hair of the head, you can ask me, why did you remove it? So similarly, my question to men are, why are you removing the beard? So basically in the ancient time, I think it was the gay who cannot see himself with a beard. His psychologically meant disorder, he, he wants to see him as a female. So he not only removes the hairs of his face, he removes the hairs of your hose of his whole body. And he sees himself as a woman. You understand? And he named men as gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Not men, ladies and men, no, gentlemen. If I say ladies and men, so but when I use the gentleman, the women are happy now. We want that like the gentlemen. Don't we don't like bearded men. We won't like us, so we should not be afraid of them. It is not being afraid of a beard. It is the difference between men and women. Beard is basically a difference. It is, you are creating, creating a ghair Allah. What beard is for men, they should have. So what I am trying to do, there are, I am using few things. There are many things in the world, the scientists are doing experiments and trying to find out the creation should be done. Ghair Allah, what Allah did not uh, explain or, or, or the creation of Allah you can see in the world. If you try to change it, if you try to alter it, for, for what purpose? For medical treatment you can do this. There are certain women and men born a physical disorder. You can create an alteration and make him men or women. But normal people who are men, they should remain men. Normal women are women, they should remain women. Or they are black, they don't have to become white. Or they are white, they shouldn't have to become black. Or there are many things people are, I don't know, you can go and think, your own thinking you can understand that is it a create a change and alteration of the creation of God? You will come to know the answer yourself. And who takes shaitan, a protector from other than Allah, then without doubt he is at a loss, a clear loss. So now all these verses that I read is referring to the behavior of the shaitan, the devil. All these ayahs was a dialogue or a discussion between Allah and the devil. I will read few Arabic ayahs and these points that I will discuss on page 19. I will read the uh, points in the Quranic ayahs then I also read the Bible. First I will read the Quranic verses. They are not complete verses, they are small points from those verses. And I've given the heading, Beware of the worldly experience stirred up by the shaitan, the satanic masculine manners, which takes away the major temperament of mankind. Points derived from the various ayats of science, Al-Baqarah 2 and Ayah 102. And people follow what shaitan recited over the kingdom of Sulaiman and Solomon did not reject it, but the shayateen, satans rejected and taught mankind magic. So in this ayah, in this verse, the point is the shaitan is teaching mankind magic. Magic is something which you, must, you see a thing which is not real. Which is not real but it appears to be real to you. That is magic. In a physical thing you see something, it appears to be a magic. It is not real. 
similarly in psychology people show you something which is not real but you start believing in it then you are the influence of the magic in religion in philosophy in psych- everything believe me people show you something which is not real and you start believing in that that is magic to so this shaitan does this shaitan does all that then the works of the shaitan are so almaida 5 90 verse the works of the shaitan satan are intoxicants you get intoxicated gambling stones and statues worship of the statues i'm giving you just points in surah al baqarah 2 268 shaitan promises you of poverty and orders you with faisha adultery fornication homosexual lesbianism this is what shaitan does to to the people he orders you with poverty if you are not going to obey the shaitan he says you will become poor poverty you will be poor fellow al baqara 2 275 shaitan has touched him to madness who eat riba the increase people are who are eating riba the increase they are touched to madness and in surah bani israil 17 ayahs 27 Shaitan's brother are spendthrifts, wasted of money, spending for nothing, not for Allah, but just for nothing. Shaitan suggests to fear from his protectors. Now, Shaitan makes sure that people are fearful from his friends. Shaitan in Alim uh, Anam six ayah one twenty one. Shaitan, Shaitan inspired their protectors to argue with you. The Shaitan inspired the people. so that the people who are following shaitan will come and argue with the believers shaitan satan causes grief to the believers from their secret consultations they have secret consultation not for the betterment they have secret consultation how to hurt how to injure the believers shaitan intends to create enmity hatred amongst you and opposition about the remembrance of allah and salah prayers and in surah mujadala 5819 shaitan satan has got the better of them so that he has made them forget the remembrance of allah now this is very important for us people who are taking education of the quranic ayas some people are ignorant of the ayas some people who are taking the essence of the message of and they forget some after some time if you keep if you do not involve in the message of allah's ayas continuously you start forgetting the essence that is what shaitan has got them better of them so he has, they, has made them forget the remembrance of allah most gracious so you must understand once you have understood the message it will not retain in your mind until you keep on repeating that ayas to you and start implementing those ayas to you in life now another part part is about the bible what the bible has to say about few things and you can understand is it a quotation referring to the message any message in it or is a satanic quotation proverbs 31 6 to 7 alcohol is for the people who are dying for those who are in misery let them drink and forget their poverty and unhappiness you know this is a this is basically a situation mentioned in the bible that it is a commandment then why people should drink alcohol what is the reason of drinking alcohol so it is said in the bible it said alcohol is for the people who are dying in hunger who are dying for those who are in misery so now further saul this is a prophet of god astaghfirullah according to the bible saul you know how you, how you get revelation in the bible this is the here it is the thing saul stripped off his clothes and lay down naked all the day and all the night why he was doing so Huh? to get a sign from god my servant isaiah has been going about naked and bare for for three years is this god commandments whose commandment that you should go naked three years then only you'll get the message of god you know? young and old they will walk barefoot and naked with their buttocks exposed where in the nude beaches they are following the bible in its two little words You see, in Faisha, uh, in uh, Judges 16, verse Samson has sex with a whore in Gaza. Ruth cohabits with Boaz and Ban. Ruth 3:4-15. I didn't reading the whole. You give you his points. Whoredoms of two sisters, Ahola and Oli, Aholiba. Ezekiel 23, verse 1 to 49. Faisha incest, incest between father-in-law Judah and daughter-in-law Tamar. Genesis, you read 38, 15 to 18. incest between mother 
Bilha and Son Reuben, Genesis 35 verse, 35 uh, chapter or book. For other types of insects, see Leviticus 18, 8, 18, 20, 11, 14 and uh, so. What these, these are uh, basically all biblical quotations to tell you how the shaitan has written all this for you to take guidance. So in the world people are doing this all naked business because they are following the Bible in its true sense. And who is doing all this? Not Allah. All these are not Allah's commandments, of course. Surah Al-Araf 7 and Ayah 19. وَيَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةَ فَكُلَا مِنْ حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِي الشَّجَرَةَ فَتَكُونَا مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ and O oh Adam, you and your pair stay in the garden, then both of you eat from wherever you wish, and do not go near this tree, so you will become from the oppressors. In this ayah, we have to note, it is referring to Adam and his pair, that they may live in the garden, and eat of that anything from the garden that is permissible in the garden they can eat but they are asked not to go near a tree if they go near that tree they will be from the oppressors so in there are three points or three things that we should know who is Adam the third second is the Jannah the garden and the third is the tree and Adam spare, Zawj. Ya Adam skun anta wa zawjukal jannah. You and your pair. You see, in, in, like we all, like that, in the audience there are ladies and gentlemen. If I call myself a man, then there are ladies. But Adam combines both, ladies and gentlemen. And how, I will let you know. You see, the, 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 there is a place in the Quran where the reference I just give you, you can write down the reference, is Surah Hujrat 49. I just give you a few, I will read a portion of that ayah. It says, Ya yuan nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa unsa. O mankind, we have created you from one male and a female. So God Almighty has created mankind from a male and a female, not from a man and from a uh, woman. Masculine and feminine. From a masculine and feminine. O, o mankind, ya yu nas, inna khalaknakum zakran waunsa. We have created you from a masculine and a feminine. So in the gender, in a, in, in a human being, a male, like a, like a man, and a woman, both these people have got a masculine and a feminine gender in their psyche. And in this psychology, they say id is referred to emotions and ego is referred to a, a, to provider, to a provider to the emotions. So the masculine is uh, in a similitude would be id, or oh sorry, uh, ego and the emotion will be the unsa, the feminine. So when Allah says to Adam, is not referring to a, mas a, a human being as a male. It is referring to a masculine personality, masculine. Not necessarily a man. Man, both sexes. Men and women, both. That is I am referring to Adam, is referred as both sexes, men and women, both. So it says, Ya Adam skun anta wa zawjukal jannah, O Adam, you and your pair stay in the garden. So you must understand that it is rough. We, when we take the lesson from it, how, what is the lesson to us as a, as a human being? So it is referring to a male or a masculine or a feminine that you live in the garden is referring to the masculine and it is saying to the feminine that is the zawj. But it is not a uh, male and a female, a man and a woman. It is referring to a, not a man and a woman, it is referring to a human being which contains a masculine and feminine personalities within them. So it says, O Adam means referring to the masculine. 
you stay you and your pair stay in the garden and then both of you eat from wherever you wish and do not go near the tree near this tree so you will become from the oppressors now what is a tree garden first of all sorry garden is a similitude in the quran there is a, in the quran there is a reference in the quran where garden is referred as a simile to the earth an example to the earth like like earth garden jannah if you say in the arabic jannah is garden but it the, the the definition of the garden as mentioned the quran is a similitude or an example like the earth not exactly earth like a like the earth an example so so garden would be like this and then shajara i'll just explain these three words because then you can understand this i properly the shajara is a tree now in the quran there is an ayah in surah surah ibrahim 14 that you can note down the reference in 14 and ayah is 24 to 26 allah in that ayah describes that the example i will in a portion of that is mathalan kalimatan tayyibatan ka shajaratin tayyiba that the example of a word good word like a tree a good tree the good tree is an example of a good word and the same in the same surah 26 ayah says mathalu kalimatin khabithatin ka shajaratin khabisatin an evil word a bad word is an example of a bad word and the tree is referred in the quran when it says a good word is like a bad tree a good tree and a bad word is like a bad tree so allah is referring to a tree in the garden that go, do not go near the tree so that would be a bad word and garden is like an earth like an earth i'm telling you like like i said not exactly and the example is given in the quran itself says that janna the garden is an example for man so in the further eyes you see taha 20 and 118 and 119 inna laka alla tajua fiha wa la ta'ra wa annaka la tadma'u fiha wa la tadha surely you are not to be hungry and naked in it and surely you are not to be thirsty and victim in it now it is referring to the garden that mankind should know or the adam its spirit should know that in the garden you will not be hungry and you will not be naked and you will not feel thirsty and you will not be victim in it four things in the garden the garden that has been provided to adam in that garden there are four things allah explains that you will not be hungry you will not be uh, naked then you will not be thirsty and you will not be victim in it in that garden where adam and its pair are supposed uh, are, are, are have to be in that garden but in that garden there is a tree which i have explained an example of a bad word do not go near that tree so otherwise that garden can, says if you live in that garden or eat of that garden consume of that garden you will not be hungry you will not be thirsty you will not be naked and you will not be victimized now how in in simple language hungry for food so they say we will provide you the food the mankind say we have to provide the food then you don't have to feel thirst the water will be supplied then you will only be no the clothes will be given to you and the third is you will not be victim your feelings will not be hurt but in a psyche physical i explained that you know the food is the nourishment and the and the eating and the, in the psychological also expect that people in the world expects to demand hunger for power that is say you will not be hungry for what food is physical but at the same time man is also hungry for power for fame for wealth you say that people we are people like this they are crazy for that but in that garden if you are in that garden you will not feel feel that hunger for power for anything for for kingdom uh, or for wealth similarly naked is that you if you do some bad or evil or if you do wrong by the satan it will be covered you will not be feel naked otherwise they say i am naked now everything is exposed of mine 
So in the view in that garden, that Adam has, Allah is asking that Adam, you eat of that, consume of that garden, but do not go near the tree. So you will not feel naked. You will always be covered. When a person gets naked, when he does something wrong and it is exposed, he's almost naked psychologically. Similarly, third factor was that you will not thirsty. Thirsty is for knowledge. People seek knowledge. But if you are in that garden of Allah, that Adam and his pair, that you will not even feel thirst of knowledge. Because Allah is, will, if you, you are consuming from that, uh, from that garden. Similarly, third, fourth is, is victim. That the, if you are within that garden, you will not be victimized. Because who is victimizing? Your feelings will not be hurt. Because Allah has provided that garden in such a manner that that garden you will not feel thirsty, you will not be victimized, but there is nothing wrong in it. Except the tree. Except the tree that do not go near the tree. And the Quran is explained that tree is refers to, I have explained that is an example of an evil word, a bad tree or a, a, a bad word. Now how this shaitan is going to misguide? Surah Taha, Surah 20 and Ayah 120. فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانِ قَالَ يَا آدَمْ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَدَّةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكِ اللَّهِ يَبْلَى So the shaitan, the Satan whispered to him saying, O Adam, do I give you the evidence over the tree of eternity and the kingdom that does not decay? Now here the shaitan is, is whispering to Adam who is in the garden. He is whispering to Adam who is in the garden, do I give you the evidence of that tree, of the tree which Allah has referred that do not go near the tree. Allah, uh, the, uh, the Satan is giving, whispering to Adam that do I give you the evidence? Why is the reason? Why Allah is forbidding you not to go near the tree? What is the purpose that do not go, that Allah said do not go the, near the tree? So the Iblis is Shaitan, sorry, Shaitan is saying that do I give you the evidence that not to go near the tree? Why? Because he says that if you go near the tree, you will become eternity. The tree of eternity. This is the tree of eternity. And the kingdom that does not decay. These are the two points that he refers to that if you go near the tree, you will, your kingdom will not decay and the tree will is the tree of eternity. You will live forever. The tree of eternity. Allah shajatil khuldi. Tree of eternity means living ever and a kingdom that does not decay. So now you must understand that no man wants to die. Knowingly that we have to we have to die and we have to give our account. Everybody knows this. But that knowing is such in darkness that we really do not want to know that we are going to die. So people are involved in the activities of life to an extent that they forget their death. Who is doing it? Because this person, this shaitan. Because you are going to live forever if you go near the tree. That the tree is referring to the shaitan is giving an argument why Allah is not asking not to go near the tree. Because it's a bad word, it's an evil word of the Satan. And further you see, you see how he says these things. In Surah Al-Araf 7, I am telling you the references where Satan is influencing man, the Adam and the man. Reference how he is misguiding us. Surah Al-Araf 7 and Ayah 20. فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمَ مَا بُورِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنْ سَوْآتِهِمَا وَقَالَ مَا نَاهَاكُمَا رَبُّكُمَا عَنْ هَادِ الشَّجَرَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَكُونَ مَلَكَيْنِ أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ الْنَاصِحِينَ Then this is Surah Al-Araf 7, 20 and 21. Then Shaitan, Satan whispered so that he made for them appear from their ills, badness or hurts which are behind them and said, 
that your Lord has forbidden from this tree that you become angels and you become eternal Khalidin Malakain is angels and he divided Allah says he divided them surely I am from the advisor for both of you now the shaitan whispers so that he made for them appear their ills their hurts you see every human being has got their feelings hurt or ills or badness within themselves so shaitan for, you see this is a very uh, approach to of, of shaitan approach is to bring the hurts or ills in front of you and he, when he brings the ills or the hurts in front of you that what he which is behind us he brings that forward first the shaitan whispers so that he made for them to appear the ills which were behind them which was somewhere behind but he brought them forward he brought those ill or hurts in front of them and then said your lord has forbidden from this tree so that you become angels and you become eternal so now you must understand the shaitan is not immediately telling you do not no get no uh, go near this tree Allah said do not go near the tree and Shaitan said go near the no 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 he says first argument he brings your hurts which you are you are hurt because where you are hurt if if somebody touches that hurtness of yours and then I try to explain something you will never understand because you will be emotionally woke up because your emotions will be woke up your hurts and evil uh, evils or your bad feelings where you are sensitive you say he's sensitive if somebody is brought forward that then you can say while God is you can whatever then you can misguide him it is not an easy matter to misguide anyone until as you move his feelings first or your emotions where hurts are there you bring the hurts forward of that person and then you want to misguide how to misguide this is how shaitan does first he brings the hurts in front of you to tell you you are so weak you don't know Arabic language you do not know this you do not know that and this is the reason and this is the purpose this so many bad things and evil you say yes I am so bad and evil and so bad I cannot do this and I cannot do that I am this and I'm so many things he will put up certain arguments that all your weakness is in front of you when you intend to do something positive all the weaknesses or hurts and badness are brought forward in front of you these are the Arabic words say say so at your hurts your badness or evils so that he appeared them first he brings that thing in front of you and then which were behind and then he said your Lord has forbidden from this tree so that you become angels and the angels or you become eternal now why he says angels and become Khalidin Khalid is again eternal before also we have read that he said you'll become you will get the kingdom that never decays before previously we know that kingdom that never decays or the angels in the in the language of the worldly affairs angel is something that does not do any mistakes and they are good good all good or everlasting because uh, Quran doesn't speak of their life and death in the for the angels except for human beings or the other things so he said you will you'll become angels you live forever and Allah and they further he says that you will become eternal so I'm telling you before also and here also he's again pushing you that you will not die you will not die knowingly that you know you're going to die because the moment you know that you're not going to die then you must know that you have to give your accounts so he's telling you that you'll become angels or you will live forever you will live forever this is eternal eternity these are the things that are brought forward in front of you first of all the ills or the hurts or the badness are brought forward then he says the Lord has forbidden you not to go near the tree because you will become angels and you will live forever but here you get the, we are reading about the Satan I'm telling you how he divided he divided then he says I divided them he divided them surely I am the advisor of both of you in the whole verse in this ayah it is read, referring to Adam and your pair Adam and your pair both so I am I'm explaining to you what are these two both 
it is your intelligence the masculine of a human being and the feminine is the is the feminine is the desire the the id or the ego of in psychology feminine is the feelings emotions we are a combination of the intelligence and the emotions now how is shaitan does it further in surah al-araf 7 and ayah 22 فَدَلَّاهُمَا بِغُرُورٍ فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ الشَّجَرَةَ بَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُهُمَا وَطَفِقَا يَخْصِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ وَنَادَاهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا أَلَمْ أَنْهَكُمَا عَنْ تِلْكُمَا الشَّجَرَةِ وَأَقُلْ لَكُمَا إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمَا عَدُوٌّ مُبِينٌ Then with delusion he made evident to both of them then they tasted of the tree, so their ills appeared, and they began to sue on over them. The leaves from the garden, and the Lord called them, Did I not forbid you about the tree? And I said, Surely the shaitan, the Satan, is a clear enemy for both of you. You see, the word delusion, every word that that we should know that with the delusion he made evident to both of them and they tasted of the tree. Delusion. What is a delusion? I read this simple meaning and then we discuss. Delusion is a false mental conception resistant to reason with regard to the actual things of matter or fact. In simple word which is a fact. Whatever is a fact. Fact. 